Hello, Mr. Zonka here, and this video is on exponential functions. The equation of an exponential function is y equal, equals a times b to the x power, and that's why we call it exponential, because the exponent is our variable. The a is the starting point, or the y-intercept, and the b represents the common ratio, or the multiplier. Here we can see when b is greater than one, that means the multiplier is bigger than one, it's going to grow, and that makes sense. Whenever you multiply a number by a number bigger than one, it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. For an exponential decay, that's when the graph is shrinking. That's when the value of b is in between zero and one. For example, like 0 0.2 or 1 half. This is gonna make something get smaller and smaller and smaller. You might notice if you look closely at these x-axes, there's this horizontal dotted line. We call that an asymptote. And this is at y equals zero. That's the line y equals zero, the horizontal line. An asymptote is basically a dotted line that shows what a graph approaches but does not reach. For example, if we take a value and multiply one half, one half, one half, one half, it's gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but it's never going to cross that y equals zero line. Just like any other type of mathematical function, we can represent these in different ways. We have our equation, for example, y equals three times two to the x power. We can make a table. If our x values are zero, one, two, and three, that would be for zero, three times two to the zero power is three, three times two to the first power is six, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course we can graph this uh, on the plane. We can see we have our starting point, that's that y-intercept, and our multiplier, this y value is three. If we multiply that by two, our next value is gonna be six, and the next value would be 12, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here is a decay model, or a shrinking graph. This example says y equals two times one-fourth to the x. Now I included negative values here because we can see that this graph is is to the left on the negative x-axis, that's where kind of the, the more visible values are. So if we start at 32, we multiply that by 1 fourth or divide by four, we'll get eight. Then our y-intercept at zero, anything to the zero power is one times two would give us one. And these are all just points on this graph here. Notice the multiplier in this case. One common thing that I, I see uh, some people make mistakes with is they'll take this y-value of two and this y value of eight, and think that the multiplier is four. But because this is shrinking, it's actually gonna be dividing by four, so we use a multiplier of one fourth uh, as a fraction to show that it is decaying, or the y value is decreasing. All right, time for the good stuff. Money, 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 money. So, if you ever buy a house or a car or put money into a bank account, you are going to deal with interest. And uh, this unit, we're going to compare simple interest and compound interest. Notice simple interest. Uh, here at our, our year zero, we start with 100. And it looks like we're adding 10 each time. Plus 10, 110, 120, 130, 140. Very simple, very straightforward. However, in compound interest, we can see year zero, we have 100. Then we have 110, which is the same. But now we end up at 121 instead of 120. 133.1 instead of 130. And this compound interest is actually growing uh, a little bit faster than the simple interest. Uh, so for simple interest, we know it's linear. It has a common difference. It's adding the same amount every time. Compound interest has a common ratio, so it is exponential. Uh, when we calculate interest rate for both of these, we are talking about the growth only. And so how we do that is for simple interest, we can calculate using the original amount and amount after one year. For compound interest, you can actually divide any two consecutive amounts. And we'll see how that works here. So for simple interest, we have the, the first value divided by the original value, 110 divided by 100 would get 1.1, which the growth part is just that 0 0.10 or 10 that one is what takes care of the original amount that we had, then we add the 10% more. Compound interest, we can see we could divide 110 by 100 to get 
0.10, but we can also divide 121 by 110 to get the same thing. 133.1 divided by 121. Because compound interest uses a multiplier, dividing at any stage uh, is going to work out to give you that interest rate. Now when we're looking for the total percent increase in this example after four years, it's going to be the same for simple and compound interest. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the final amount after four years and divide that by the original amount. That would be this 140 divided by 100 to get 1.4 or a percent increase of 40%. For compound interest, it would be 146.41 divided by 100 to get 1.4641, which would be a percent increase of 46.41%. You might notice on simple interest, our interest rate is 10%, and over four years is 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. That's just being, it's simple, it's the same percent each year based on the original amount. Compound interest, however, even though it's 10%, we could see it's growing at a faster rate because now for the second year, instead of taking 10% from the original, we take 10% from 110, then 10% for 121. So it's slowly going to grow faster and faster. So if you're investing money, go for compound interest. If you're borrowing money that you have to pay back, simple would be uh, your best bet if you're trying to keep more money in your wallet. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful.